Um, to Sean Ferris at Hawthorne and the, the company, they were fantastic and put all the technology together. Um, and thanks to, uh, thanks to Wembley Arena. I tell you what, Wembley Arena, they're nice people. I love coming here and they've been great with us as always this year. And thanks to Zachary, who's uh, made a big contribution to pulling out this uh, sequence we're going through here, which we've actually not rehearsed, so it'll be a bit of fun because we have not been able to get together. We've rehearsed some of it, not much. So, uh, you know, skin of the pants and all that stuff, but then it's fun, isn't it? Um, awaken, awaken, awaken. You know, when people talk about solutions, they kind of expect you to um, map out a, a, an organization and a structure and have someone taking the minutes. Um, that's not what it's about. Um, we're in a situation where, where psychopaths have taken over our reality. And so what's the answer? Well, the answer is we are. We are the answer. And, you know, you can, you can go through the left brain and talk about structure, and he takes the minutes, like I say. But the bottom line is, the difference between the world we live in and the world that we can live in is whether our society is conscious or unconscious. Because unconsciousness is getting to get us here, so consciousness must take us somewhere else. It's about becoming conscious. The question is, how do you become conscious? Well, you dis disconnect from the program and then you automatically are conscious, as I'll come to. But, you know, the, the theme in whatever cu uh, culture, whether it's the Gnostics or whatever, they talk about this archontic force envying humans and fearing that they will wake up. And that's why they have to keep us asleep and they're terrified that we'll wake up. And that's why in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Because the one-eyed man, the suppression, has kept humanity, the target population, in a deeper sense of ignorance than it is in. Thus, the one-eyed man is king. So we wake up, and like I said, the three-eyed, two-eyed man, woman, everyone uh, will wake up, and the, the game will be over. They don't keep us in a state of spiritual, mental, uh, and emotional oppression for a laugh. They do it because it's the only way of controlling us. So getting out of that is fundamental. They are seeking to hijack our perception. We need to take our perception back. You know, the, and, and when, when the Native Americans are talking about this choice between um, one side of us and another side of us, well, that is the world that we have helped to create by falling into its trap. People say, what are the solutions? Uh, 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 uh. That's the solution, because everything comes from that. Joy, love, peace, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion. The, all these things will transform the world. And there's so many people in this world who are already there. But they need to put their heads above the paraffin and express that instead of hiding it and hiding away from society. Which one wins decides which society we live in. Thus, it's not about left brain structure. What we need to do in a, in a, a, a holographic out expression of this changing consciousness will naturally come from the changing consciousness. Changing consciousness is what we need. We've been decoding this reality, we need to decode this reality, and that means changing our consciousness, and that's what we decode. And Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used to, we created them. So, here we are in a perfect example of that. The way we have um, expressed ourselves through generations and generations, thousands of years of what we call human life, has got us into this situation. And so we need to change that to get out of it. And the difference is, being in the program or being conscious beyond the program. It is absolutely that simple. And once we're really conscious beyond the program, there'll be nothing like fear of expressing yourself within the realm of the program. Because some people kind of suss the program, but they've not got so conscious that they've gone above fear so that they can actually express themselves within the program. They've sussed the program, but then they keep their heads down and their mouths shut because they worry about the consequences of challenging the program. That's not in a conscious state. That's a greater awareness state. It's not a conscious state. A conscious state coming from the heart. The heart doesn't do fear. Bollocks to that. Fear, heart, 
love doesn't fear. Love, love, has, love has this, this image of being weak. Oh, he's, he's, he's about love. He'll be doing the washing up next. What's he doing? Well, love is, is, is beyond fear. It's beyond time and space, the realm of fear. Thus, it does what it believes to be right, whatever that is and whatever it takes. And when we reach that level, there'll be so many people speaking out and uh, expressing themselves in the program, the program will get absolutely dismantled by people waking up and expressing that awakeness. You know, it is so simple. How do we change the world? We change ourselves. How do we change ourselves? We step out of the program and become the conscious infinity forever that we are. Becoming consciousness beyond, uh, conscious beyond mind. In this, uh, you know, kind of matrix, this, they'll never kind of see it, uh, you know, like in the, the, the uh, quotes I've been giving about the simulated universe, they, they'll, they'll never see it, uh, you know, the, the walls. Well, the way through the walls is becoming conscious beyond mind. It's breaking out of thought and going into intuitive knowing, into a state of awareness that is beyond thought. It just knows. You know, we do the body language, it's telling us. We say, hold on, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And then we go, look, I just know, I just know. Because that's where knowing comes from. And what am I saying? Reversing the inversion going from interacting with the, this reality through the gut and the emotions and starting to interact with it through the heart again. Oh, we can do it, it's a choice. We can do it now, we can do it tonight, we can go on doing it after tonight. It is just a choice. But people often don't make the choice because they think, well, the consequences of making the choice, well, my life will change. Yes, it will, for the better, overwhelmingly once you start to break out of it. The divine light is always in man, woman, presenting itself to the senses and to the comprehension, but man rejects it. We just have to let it in. You let it in through the heart. This is a wonderful lady, Alice Walker, wonderful lady. The most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. And that is the greatest uh, dismantling of human power that this archontic force has is selling the perception that we don't have any. You had the power all along, my dear. We have just forgotten and we're waking up to it. Who do we answer to? David Icke? Do we answer to Ethel Jones or Charlie Smith? Or do we answer to I am infinite awareness, all that is, has been, and ever can be, having an experience of that name? <laughs> that is the revolution. The revolution of self-identity from experience to that which is experiencing. Imprisoned by walls that we build for ourselves and the system helps us, encourages us to build them. Perception programming, we accept the, 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 the imposition of belief from other people. Whether it's parents or academics, no. Blank sheet of paper. I decide, the, the I decides what goes on that paper. In other words, what I accept as my reality. I don't care how many letters you've got after your name. I don't care if you're freaking famous. I don't know who you are. I don't care if you're my mother and father who are trying to impose their belief system upon me. I am infinite awareness. I will decide what my belief is and how I perceive reality. And that, again, breaks out of this program of responding to how others tell us we should be. And we've got to kind of realize that there will be resistance to that. People who go, oh, yeah, yeah, what about you, when you start to resist the program. But it doesn't matter, because if they can't respect our right to be ours, well, what we'd bother in being around them anyway for? It's about dropping the actor's mask or realizing what the mask is, that it's just an experience. It's just a point of attention within the infinite reality. And when we leave this body, we'll move our point of attention. And we are doing that infinitely forever. That's as bad as it freaking gets. And if we, if we go on accepting the program, go on accepting externally implanted beliefs, then we're just pawns in the program, pawns in the game, and we've given our power away. What are we doing as infinite reality? having our belief systems externally imposed. 
We have infinite reality, infinite possibility, infinite potential to choose from and manifest. Why are we having people tell us what we are and what we should be? When we choose not to do that, when we choose not to fall into the program, then we start to make a positive difference in the world. Because by dis disconnecting from the program, we are taking its power away one by one by one. And when we get caught in emotion, that's what we're supposed to do in our freaking challenge, uh, overcoming emotional impulses. You know, I know that as much as anybody. But when we get caught in these emotion programs running through the body, and what's interesting is when near-death experiences describe their experiences, invariably they say, when I left the body, there was no emotion. It wasn't your emotion lust. Human emotion wasn't there anymore. It's a program, all this low vibrational human response, because that's the energy that they wish to generate for reasons we've discussed, and thus they have put programs through the operating system which generate that energy. But infinite consciousness can over overwhelm and overpower that if we come through the heart, because the heart doesn't do that kind of emotion, this does. And once we fall for the emotion trap, we're not in the now. Because when we worried about the future, we pulled into a future that actually doesn't exist. We're pulled into a place where we can't do anything. We are powerless because we can't, you can't change something that doesn't exist. And when we have regrets, emotional regrets about the past, we're pulled into the past that doesn't actually exist. We're pulled out of the now, which is the one moment where we can change everything. So pulling out of the regrets and the future, I mean, I am not what has happened to me. That is an experience that we have had to this point. And it's brought us to this point. And some of the things we haven't liked have been good for us because it's given us experiences that have helped us to become more understanding of everything. But I am not what has happened to me. I am where I am now. And at any point in the now, we can make a new start. And whatever has happened in the past, however bad it was, however we regret it, however we don't like it, we can start a new now any time we choose and build a different world, a different reality, a different human experience for ourselves. We have the power to do that as long as we don't fall for the program that pulls us into the past and the future. I am not what I choose to, I am what I choose to be now. And tonight, any time, we can choose to be something different. Oh, well, you weren't like that before. No, but that was another now. This is this now. I am now. And uh, Leonardo da Vinci said, one can have no smaller or greater mastery other than mastery of oneself. This is the revolution. Mastery of oneself that takes us out of the program and ceases to have us being a computer terminal on someone else's matrix. And what we do is we don't accept externally downloaded perceptions of reality. We choose our own on our terms. Socrates said, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old or fighting anything, but on building the new. And this is about, this revolution is about building the new. And by building the new, by the very definition of doing that, you're challenging the old by by definition, you're replacing it with something else instead of fighting it and becoming an expression of what you're fighting. What you fight, you become. Remember who you are. That is the revolution. And having the initial courage, but you soon get past that and the need for it, to express who you are, no matter what people say about you, do about you. Because if we... Uh, give away our right to be us because of what the program is doing to us, well, we might as well not even start. Can you remember who you were before the world told you what you should be? That's a starting point. Let's now, from this point, start to be who we are and not what the world is telling us we should be. People think that oneness... People think that what we call oneness is like everyone's the same. That's the opposite. Oneness 
is the oneness of all possibility. So to express the diversity and the differences and the uniqueness of infinite points of attention is to celebrate oneness, to celebrate being part of all possibility. The opposite of that is the system in which you do invariably turn out people just the same because they're operating on such a narrow band of possibility. You, expressing your uniqueness and being aware of oneness is not a contradiction because it's an expression of each other. This near-death experience has said, I detach myself from preconceived outcomes. That's a killer, that. Because once you have a preconceived outcome, this is why, what I want the outcome to be, and you're not kind of fluid, well, we'll go and see where it goes, then if that outcome doesn't happen, then you consider it a failure, you consider that it's not happened, and you consider life's terrible. And yet, if you just flowed with it, while that possibility might manifest, a better one might manifest in somewhere else. So preconceived idea is such a trap, such a prison. Preconceived outcomes. And trust that all is well. Being myself allows the wholeness of my unique magnificence to draw me in those directions most beneficial to me and to all others. This is really the only thing I have to do. And within that framework, everything that is truly mine comes into my life effortlessly in the most magical and unexpected ways imaginable, demonstrating every day the power and love of who I truly am. <laughs> One of the kind of experiences and the common themes through my life in the last 25 years, if it's easy and it flows, go with it. If there's blocks all over the place, go somewhere else. Because what that quote said, it's effortless once you get into the vibe, once you get into the flow of the self, instead of having the mind have preconceived outcomes so you're pushing against doors that will never hope and getting more and more frustrated. When if you went in the, with the heart and just flowed with it, amazing things would unfold. Life becomes an adventure. Remember who you are by forgetting what they told you to be. Well, if we look through our lives, how many bloody people have told us what we should be, what we should think, what we should do, how we should respond. Enough of this stuff. We decide what happens in our lives. We decide what we believe. That's what freedom is. It's not freedom to have imposed external beliefs, it's freedom from external imposed beliefs. We are one. We are expressions of an infinite awareness. If you don't become the sea or the ocean, you'll be seasick all your life. And when you open your heart and you open your mind to sync with the heart, then you start to interact with the sea, that sea of infinite knowledge, awareness, that sea of infinite intuitive knowing where without looking in any academic direction, you just know, you just know, you just know what's right, you just know where you have to be tomorrow because this is telling you and you follow it and suddenly amazing things happen because you followed it. Where if you followed the head, oh, I can't go there, that's silly, you will not have those amazing experiences because you've cut them off. This is... Um, Ibn Alexander from his near-death experience in which he said to experience thinking outside the brain is to enter a world of instantaneous connections that make ordinary thinking those aspects limited by the physical brain and the speed of light seem like some hopelessly asleep or sleepy and plodding event our truest deepest self is completely free it is not crippled or compromised by past actions or concerned with identity or status. It comprehends that it has no need to fear the earthly world and therefore it has no need to build itself up through fame or wealth or conquest. The, t the revolution is to take that awareness of self and bring it into the program. And with that, the program will dissolve in the sight and the uh, power of that energetic change that it will undergo as a result of that energetic transformation that we bring. 
Here's another um, near-death experience. So I have never interviewed anyone who had a near-death experience who told me that they came back to make more money or to spend more time at their jobs away from their families. Instead, they became convinced that they need to be more loving and kind. They react to their experience by living life to its fullest. They believe their lives have a purpose, even if that purpose is obscure to them. Invariably, it involves concepts such as love of family, service to others. They seem to know that the love they create while living will be reflected and radiated back to them when they die or when they change their point of observation. It's that, it's that awareness, that heart-centered awareness beyond the program, beyond body-mind, that we need to connect with, we need to become part of, because it's the true self anyway, and bring that in an expression in the way we live our lives into this program. That will dissolve the program and start to manifest that reality here. That's all it is. We don't need minutes and committees. I don't even really need vast protests. We need to transform the reality by becoming another reality and expressing that reality within this one. This reality will not survive that energetic onslaught of the natural order, of truth, of love, of peace. It won't. And it depends on us not doing that. A Jim Morrison quote, the most important freedom is to be who you really are. You trade your reality for a role. You trade your sense for an act. You give up your ability to feel in exchange you put on a mask. There can't be any large-scale revolution until there is a personal revolution on an individual level. It has got to happen inside first. That is the revolution. It's so simple. We want a world of love and peace, then we have to be loving and peaceful with each other as well as those we don't like. That's it. That's it. It's rejecting the program and rejecting the, the impulses to follow the program and expressing our freedom, living what we want this world to be, and collectively, we will be the world that we want it to be. It's that simple. It's about, as this quote says, breaking down all the pretenses, all the lies that we've been fed, rejecting them, coming to our own conclusions through the heart. This great quote from uh, Osho, the awakened man and woman, People are afraid, very much afraid of those who know themselves. They have a certain power, a certain aura. Why? Because they're accessing high frequency vibrational energy awareness information. They have a certain power, a certain aura, and a certain magnetism. A charisma that can take out alive young people from their traditional imprisonment. The awakened man or woman can, cannot be enslaved. That is the difficulty, and he cannot be imprisoned. The awakened man is the greatest stranger in the world. He does not seem to belong to anybody. No organization can find him, no community, no society, no nation. That is the revolution. The revolution of freedom, of being our unique self without permission from anybody. Who's going to give me permission to be me? I don't need it, thank you. I am what I am, I shall express it. I am me, I am free. And this was, um, this lady, brilliant quote, you cannot stand fully in the truth of your being as long as you continue to demand acceptance, approval, and validation from people outside of yourself. Be willing to piss people off if it means standing up for your truth of who you are. They told me 25 years ago, you're finished. No way out of this, no way back from here. It's all over. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? It's over. You can't go any further after all that frickin' ridicule. Watch me. Watch me. That's 
the power we have. We don't have to compare ourselves with other people. We are our unique self. We have nothing to compare with. He's got more money, he's got that, he's more famous. Who gives a shit? I am my unique self. It doesn't matter. As long as I express my unique self, I am in my power. I don't need to be anyone else. I am me. I am unique. I am a unique point of attention within an infinite reality. We all are, but we forget that. As Gino Christomurdi said, we are always comparing what we are with what we should be. We are what we are. Let's express what we are, celebrate what we are. And then the uniqueness, the spontaneity of expressing uniqueness will break the program, which is about suppression of uniqueness and oppression and conformity. We are the revolution if we cease to conform with traditional, programmed, this is how you do it, reality. If, if you only stay in that area of expression where you are within the program, how can anything move forward? You're going round and round. All the great changes of society and changes of anything, the great visionaries, all of them, have been ones that have walked out of the program and taking the shit for doing so because out of the program is the only way you're going to push on in terms of understanding what life is about, who we are, and where we're coming from. The greatest fear in the world is the opinions of others, and the moment you are unafraid of the crowd, you are no longer a sheep. You become a lion, and a great roar rises from your heart, the roar of freedom, of being you, and not someone else's version of you. Come out of the masses, stand alone like a lion and live your truth according to your own light, not someone else's version of it. Expressing our uniqueness is a revolution that will change everything because the program depends on that not happening. It is better to live one day as a lion than a hundred years as a sheep, what's the point? Doing what is right, no matter what you are told, is the spirit of change. Because if you don't do that, you're just operating within the circle and nothing changes. You have to step out of the circle and do what you believe to be right rather than what you are told to do, to break out of the program, out of the circle, and thus move society forward. Do what is right, not what is easy. What a bore doing what is freaking easy all the time. It's easy on one level, though, not <clears throat> with um, opening up to consciousness, to actually stay with your head down. Oh, yeah, I'll just conform. But if you want to express <coughs> beyond the program, then we have to do things that sometimes we find challenging, like speaking our truth in a world that doesn't want to hear. <coughs> it's just freaking smoke. <coughs> leaving the herd that's the revolution because the herd is the program so if we leave the herd we leave the program oh it's so simple expressing our uniqueness do not go where the path may lead go instead where there is no path and leave a trail that's how you change the world <coughs> that's how you change the world it's the only way one who follows the crowd can go no further than the crowd what is that saying one who follows the program can go further, no further than the program. And you stay in the matrix. Those who walk alone are likely to find themselves in places that no one has gone before. And it's those that have gone there and brought that back, brought that awareness back, that have through what we call human history changed everything. And, and the only things that have changed everything. The first step to change is decide that where you are is not an option and then go for it. Go for it. Not sitting around, well, what are the, uh, 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 but, but what, uh, jump! And you find you can fly. Doesn't mean there ain't challenges, but my God, you find your life changes. And it becomes the adventure and not the chore. Not the round and round the garden. It takes nothing to join the crowd. It takes everything to stand alone. And it's those who stand alone that change everything. Because those that stand alone are outside the program. As I said, 
right from the start of the day. Today's mighty oak is just yesterday's nut that held its ground long enough for perception to move and see that it wasn't a nut all along. Small minds cannot comprehend great spirits. To be great, you have to be willing to be mocked, hated, and misunderstood. And you need to stay strong because <clears throat> otherwise you get pulled back in the program. You, what a great quote this from, what a great quote this is from Bob Barley, and I tell you what, even in recent times, I've freaking learned this one. You never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. It's amazing what strength we can manifest when the situation demands it, where in our minds, when we're thinking about it, we think, I don't have that strength. And then suddenly, when it comes to it, you do. It's taking responsibility, because what we don't face, we cannot change. This is why the new age is, oh, it's negative. They'll never change a freaking thing. Never change a thing. They're just in denial. They're just in escapism. You need to face what, what, what we need to face, and then we can change it. I can't see nothing wrong. Everything seems fine. Escapism. Escapism. It's your road, and it's yours alone. Others may walk it with you, but no one can walk it for you. We're all unique. Destination is a choice. Give up, give in, or give it all you've got and refuse to give in. And we're entering these, we're in these challenging times where we need the power of the heart that won't give in, that won't take a step back because things are happening that make it fearful. This doesn't do fear. The heart is the ultimate power. It won't stand back. It will stand up to what it believes to be right, no matter what the situation is. And that's what we need. Persistence. This great quote here. Now that we've exhausted all possibilities, let's get freaking started. Persistence. If you have the power of the heart and the persistence of keeping with the power of the heart, no matter what we face, we can change anything. Together, we can change everything. The person who said it can't be done should not interrupt the person doing it. People say, there's nothing you can do about this conspiracy. The conspiracy depends on us believing there's nothing we can do about the conspiracy. Bollocks to that. The conspiracy is coming down. It's in the process of coming down. It may not seem like it, but my God, the cracks in the dam are becoming more and more obvious. There's a phenomenal wake-up going on around the world. Leonardo da Vinci, it's long come to my attention that people of accomplishment rarely sat back and let things happen to them. They went out and happened to things. I've been impressed by the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Being willing is not enough. We must do. People say knowledge is power. It's not. The use of knowledge is power. Having knowledge and not using it is might as well not fricking have it. One of the responsibilities of starting to understand what is happening is to express that and communicate it so more and more people have access to it. It's a responsibility for the gift of knowledge, for the gift of awareness. The only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. That is the revolution. This is what I believe is going on. This is what I believe about reality. <laughs> bloody mad. This is what I believe. This is what I believe about reality. I just keep going. Keep communicating it. No matter what people say about you. They'll be saying something else tomorrow. A slave is one who wants, uh, waits for someone else to come and free him. How have we seen that through history? People under oppression waiting for someone else to come and do the business. We need to do the business together. And then, together, there'll be no more slavery. If we stop acting like slaves, there'll be no more slavery. Human race, get off your knees. We get off our knees, we look this system in the face, and we say no more. We're not cooperating anymore with our own enslavement. And the thing is, the power is with us in numbers alone. We, 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 we don't understand our true power. I mean, look, don't panic organize. I think I see an answer to this. It's, it's in front of our faces. This system is a house of cards, a row of dominoes, however you want to symbolize it. Push one down, all the buggers have gone. 
divide and rule is there to stop us re responding to this in unity by fighting among ourselves. I mean, this, if you've not seen it, it's worth watching on YouTube. This is a, a video called The Tiny Dot. And what it does is show the numbers comparison between the American people, and this is only some of it, and that which is dictating to the people and dictating their lives and changing the laws that impose themselves on their lives. They are the, uh, we are the many and they are the tiny few. And to stop us doing that, they have to divide and rule us. Look, 535 members of Congress dictating to 300 million people, what are we doing? And in fact, it's even less than that that are actually doing the dictating. 650 MPs, 63 million people, what are we doing? And it's much less than that again, in fact, who are actually calling the shots. So what they have to do is divide and rule us. So we're fighting among ourselves, and therefore we don't um, uh, focus ourselves together in unity on the common uh, control system. So they play us off religion against religion, politics against politics, income bracket against income bracket. And we need to understand that this conspiracy is not designed to enslave Jewish people, Muslim people, uh, middle class white people, uh, conservatives, uh, uh, labor, Republican, Democrat, whatever. It is designed to enslave all of us that are not in the 0.1%. That is. For goodness sake, let's concentrate our minds, put down our dividing belief systems, put them aside, and let's unify with what all of us are going to be affected by and increasingly are affected by. Let's look at the control system that wants to enslave us all, and let's work together to bring it to an end, because we have the unity, we have the numbers to do that. We, we, we fight among ourselves. Resentment, Carrie Fisher, great quote, resentment is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Well, let's put this aside for goodness sake. All this internet stuff you see, all this abuse. You know, Ad Anonymous, typical example, at Food Nutrition, I'm a 30-year-old fitness fanatic and food expert, and you're wrong, you dumbass, all this is going on. All this abuse. All on these conspiracy sites where all this abuse is going on, and they say they want to change the freaking world, they're just perpetuating the world that they say they want to change. Look at all this, slaves fighting slaves. Can't we see it? Can't we see that there's a common enemy, if you want to use that word, I don't like it, but there's a common focus that we need to look upon and deal with. And why we're fighting among ourselves, and why people in uniform within the 99% are policing on behalf of the 1% or less, the system goes on. And this is one of the biggest divide and rules of all. Me, me, me. At least, you know, if you're in a religious group or belief system or political whatever, at least there's a group of you divided from a group. What me, me, me does is divide every individual in me, me, me mode from the rest of humanity. Because the only decision that's being made on actions is what is right for me, me, me. Therefore, the rest of humanity is excluded from the decision-making process. It just isolates every individual in a little island, a little bubble outside the rest of humanity. And what would change this world overnight if we started doing what we believe to be right and not necessarily what we believe to be right in the moment? Not screwing someone because we can, but doing the fair thing because we can. And if we just do what we believe to be right, as opposed to what we believe to be right for us in that moment, that will transform everything. Because this world's been created by people making decisions for their own benefit, instead of the benefit of the greater humanity, the greater oneness, the greater I. And when we cut off the energetic sustenance of this force, which depends on low vibrational, distorted emotion and distorted thought, then the power, the power is withdrawn from that which oppresses us. If we withdraw that energy source and bring in that energy source, the game is over because we turn the electricity off. We turn the nutrition off that feeds the beast. And again, we're back to the same thing in that Native American wolf image. Think love, think peace, think harmony, and then 
we turn the collective energy field, the energetic seed, into love, peace, and harmony, and the world is not what it used, uh, used to be. Kindness, it doesn't cost a thing. Sprinkle that shit everywhere. <laughs> it's a choice. You know, and I'm not standing here like, you know, cross-legged Buddha on a mountain. We all have these challenges to, to, to deal with. Uh, hug the world to sanity. Give me a hug. Hug the world to sanity. Isn't that nicer than a conflict? Isn't that nicer than shouting at each other? What are we doing? And it's only a choice. It's only a choice, and people think it's trite, and it's weak, and it's not very much. It will change the freaking world if we did this. Infinite love is the only truth. Everything else is illusion. When we realize that, we go outside the illusion. And I've been talking for years about the truth vibrations, right back in the early 90s. Um, when I was told through a series of different psychics in different parts of the world at that time, the early 90s, that there was an energetic change coming that was going to uh, act like a spiritual alarm clock. It was going to wake people up from the slumber, wake people up from the unconscious states that we have been manipulated into. And in 1990, when I started out and I heard that, there was no, no evidence at all that that was the case. Now, the evidence is massive. Well, I walked a lonely journey, and there weren't many people on it, but now the number of people awakening, the number of people, number of people out of the mainstream that are awakening to things they would have rejected by reflex action is fantastic now. The truth vibrations are starting to tease open the program mind to perceive reality in its true sense and perceive self in its true sense. And like... Um, like anything, momentum builds more momentum, but builds more momentum. And we are entering a period now, in the next 10 years, where much as this, the system will try more and more and more to oppress and suppress, the awakening is going to wash this away, because we, thank you, we will cease to all gold. I think I used to be a goalkeeper, getting down in freaking uh, installments now. Oh, I've got the sweat in my eyes. Thank you ever so much. That's ever so kind. You see, that was the kindness. Um, and this, this truth vibrational transformation is happening. What I was told 25 years ago is the more awake will be affected first, and then more people and more people and more people, and eventually people who were solid gold asleep at that time will, would be influenced by it. It's happening, and it's, it's exponential. So this is a wonderful, wonderful time to be alive, to see this transformation happen. There will be times when we think it won't be. There are times when we think the system and the program is, is too powerful, but it won't be. We are going to bring this system to an end by changing who we are and therefore changing the nature of where we are. It was always so. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Martin Luther King. And therefore, stockpiling weapons and fighting, fighting the Illuminati is just joining in the very conflict that feeds, feeds the beast. We need to love this world into a state of love. There is no other way of doing it. And what is love? It, people think love is weak. It's not weak. It's the ultimate power. It will not, it will not walk backwards in the face of anything that it believes is right. And love is not always about lovey-dovey stuff. Love is also about putting yourself on the line speaking your truth, standing up against oppression, standing up against all the shit that comes your way because you believe that what you're doing is right and serving the greater good. That's also love, even though you might lose your temper here and there. The reason you're doing it is because of love, because you want this world so badly to be what it can be. As the, as, the, 
as the man said, as the man said, I've, I've been to the top of the mountain and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. I'll freaking get there with you. I'll get there freaking with you. I'm not going until this change, this transformation is over. I've invested too much of my life in this. But if you talk about destruction, don't you know you can count me out? We don't have to fight. Critical thinking is not the manifestation of red mist. We need to stay calm. We need to stay in the heart. You don't fight for peace. You're peace for peace. All the reasons I've talked about. I'm no longer accepting things that I cannot change. It's time to change things that I cannot accept and not accept anything less. Be a loose cog in the machine and the machine will cease to function. Stop cooperating if no one, uh, no one rules, if no one obeys. That's the point. And there's billions of us being oppressed by a few. If we stop uh, cooperating with our own oppression, the game is over. Unthink and respect for authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Look at it. What if these these sheep, these goats, whatever they are, refused to cooperate with these two. What would these two do? They would know what to do. It's all over. And uh, this is a great quote from Gandhi. Don't cooperate with evil, he said. You assist an evil system most effectively by obeying its orders and decrees. An evil system never deserves such allegiance. Allegiance uh, to that means uh, partaking of this evil. A good person will resist an evil system with his or her own soul. We need to stop cooperating with our own enslavement together, and it will be over. It's our cooperation with our own enslavement that makes it possible. What happens if they stop complying, Mom? We're fucked! <laughs> If they didn't comply, they're fucked. Stop complying, start defying. There will be no change. There is no change through the political system. We're not going to change anything through the political system because its very structure is there to stop anything changing. We have to change it by not cooperating with the system. Nothing strengthens authority so much as silence. Freedom or tyranny, that's the choice. Blue pill, red pill. And it is a choice, that's the wonder. We are in a situation where we are still in control of our destiny by the choices we make, but we need to make them together and work together. Mind prison or free thought, choice. Matrix has us or matrix doesn't have us, choice. Awaken from the program. Open your mind to consciousness. Open your mind to all possibility. Open your heart to infinite forever. That, again, is the revolution, and this conspiracy and this fake matrix will not survive that revolution of perception, that revolution of energy, that revolution of frequency, that revolution of human society. Beyond the bounds of time and space, open your heart, open your heart, make that the point that we interact with reality. Open your heart to beyond time and space so intuitively we get the inspiration, the insight, the knowing that is there to be tapped beyond time and space. Not ahead of our time, beyond time. It's all there just waiting to be tapped into. Saying, come to me, come to me, come to me. People say, when's the cavalry coming? If the cavalry came, it would not be the cavalry because it would be in our frequency and thus in our perceptions. Thus, we have to open our heart to the cavalry and the cavalry is us. It's not some guy in a spaceship. It is the greater self that we've become disconnected from. Rise of the truth vibrations. This vibrational information change. The heart tunes us into them. The heart starts the revolution, the adventure, out of the program into true self. And we start to dance to a different drum. What a great line that is. Those who danced were thought to be quite insane by those who could not hear the music. More and more are starting to hear the music. Awaken, awaken, awaken. We now have a, a period of vibrational 
expansion coming up. If we can open our hearts and just tune with it and go with it. Lose yourself, girl, as my mate used to say in the 60s. Go for it, girl. Open your heart and just see where it takes, where the vibration takes, out of mind, out of program, into heart. Just flowing with the energy, the information, the awareness that this space is now pulsating with after the day that we've had. So, let's dance to a different drum. Go for it.
Fantastic. See you in a minute. Oh, one of the great things that started to happen. You know, I've come across, uh, you know, mainstream musicians and stuff like that over the years. Some have been nice and some of them had wonderful opportunities speaking to massive crowds to get this information out, which they say they believe in and they've spurned every opportunity. But what's wonderful now is that there are bands and there are musicians coming forward with the information and expressing that information in their music. Expressing the information in, in, um, in communicating the conspiracy, but also communicating the answer to the conspiracy. And here is a wonderful band all the way from Canada that brings together that unity of this is the problem, this is the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Canada, the ancient order. Hey, what did that guy say? You'll be in a wheelchair by the time you're 30. <laughs> Love it. Losing me trousers, losing me shirt. Bloody hell, could clear the bloody room if I lose any more. Oh, okay. What a, what a, I love, love this day so much. Infinite power has always been within you, claim it. It's just there to be taken. They've kidded us that it's not. We are not this, this is a joke. This is a parody of who we are. That's who we are. Infinite awareness, all that is and has been. And we, I, I see now, I believe now that we are at the end of the beginning. The end of the beginning of the conscious awakening, the manifest awakening. Where, for a long time, it seemed that there was nothing going on, that it was all a lost cause. And now suddenly, the human mind has started to tease open in greater and greater numbers. We are beginning, or we are at the cusp of the end of the beginning where enough people have now started to suss what's going on and to look at another level of self, another expression of self and awareness to actually start making a difference. And from that, we, we need to kick on and make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger by people who have awoken or started to awaken. It's all about awakening, not awaken, can full stop. Start to speak their truth and get this stuff out there, no matter who and what the stuff we get back for doing so, because persistence is the way we bring an end to this. We have the power, awakened we have the power, asleep we are what we have become. Open your heart, change the world, this is the key. This is the key. I am love, you are love, we are infinite consciousness. That is the true self. We are all one and we are remembering we are all one. What a lovely way to interact with people. Put your weapons down. I offer you peace. I offer you love. I offer you friendship. I am an expression of the highest source. I salute that source in you. Let's work together. That's the message of this day. They can actually express themselves within the program. They've sussed the program, but then they keep their heads down and their mouths shut because they worry about the consequences of challenging the program. That's not in a conscious state. That's a greater awareness state. It's not a conscious state. A conscious state coming from the heart. The heart doesn't do fear. Bollocks to that. Fear, heart, love doesn't fear. Love, love, has, love has this, this image of being weak. Oh, he's, he's, he's about love. He'll be doing the washing up next. What's he doing? Well, love is, is, is beyond fear. It's beyond time and space. The realm of fear, thus, it does what it believes to be right, whatever that is and whatever it takes. And when we reach that level, there'll be so many people speaking out and uh, expressing themselves in the program, the program will get absolutely dismantled by people waking up and expressing that awakeness. You know, it is so simple. How do we change the world? We change ourselves. How do we change ourselves? We step out of the program and become the conscious infinity forever that we are. Becoming consciousness beyond, uh, conscious beyond mind. In this, uh, you know, kind of matrix, this, they'll never kind of see it, uh, you know, like in the, the, the uh, quotes I've been giving about the simulated universe, they, they'll, they'll never see it, uh, you know, the, the walls. Well, the way through the walls is becoming conscious beyond mind. 
It's breaking out of thought and going into intuitive knowing, into a state of awareness that is beyond thought. It just knows. You know, we do the body language. It's telling us. We say, hold on, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And then we go, look, I just know, I just know. Because that's where knowing comes from. And what am I saying? Reversing the inversion. Going from interacting with the, this reality through the gut and the emotions and starting to interact with it through the heart again. Oh, we can do it. It's a choice. We can do it now. We can do it tonight. We can go on doing it after tonight. It is just a choice. But people often don't dropping the actor's mask or realizing what the mask is. That it's just an experience. It's just a point of attention within the infinite reality. And when we leave this body, we'll move our point of attention. And we are doing that infinitely forever. That's as bad as it freaking gets. And if we, if we go on accepting the program, go on accepting externally implanted beliefs, then we're just pawns in the program, pawns in the game, and we've given our power away. What are we doing as infinite reality? Having our belief systems externally imposed. We have infinite reality, infinite possibility, infinite potential to choose from and manifest. Why are we having people tell us what we are and what we should be? When we choose not to do that, when we choose not to fall into the program, then we start to make a positive difference in the world. Because by dis disconnecting from the program, we are taking its power away one by one by one. And when we get caught in emotion, that's what we're supposed to do in our freaking challenge. Uh, overcoming emotional impulses. You know, I know that as much as anybody. But when we get caught in these emotion programs running through the body, and what's interesting is when near-death experiences describe their experiences, invariably they say, when I left the body, there was no emotion. It wasn't your emotion loss. Human emotion wasn't there anymore. It's a program, all this low vibrational human response because that's the energy that they wish to generate for reasons we've discussed and thus they have put programs through the operating system which generate that energy. But infinite consciousness can over overwhelm and overpower that if we come through the heart because the heart doesn't do that kind of emotion, this does. And once we fall for the emotion trap, we're not in the now. Because when we worried about the future, we pulled into a future that actually doesn't exist. We pulled into a place where we can't do anything. We are powerless because we can't, you can't change something that doesn't exist. And when we have regrets, the only way of controlling us. So getting out of that is fundamental. They are seeking to hijack our perception. We need to take our perception back. You know, the, and, and when, when the Native Americans are talking about this choice between um, one side of us and another side of us, well, that is the world that we have helped to create by falling into its trap. People say, what are the solutions? Uh, 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 uh. That's the solution, because everything comes from that. Joy, love, peace, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion. The all these things will transform the world. And there's so many people in this world who are already there. But they need to put their heads above the paraffin and express that instead of hiding it and hiding away from society. Which one wins decides which society we live in. Thus, it's not about left brain structure. What we need to do in a in a, a, a holographic out expression of this change in consciousness will naturally come from the change in consciousness. Change in consciousness is what we need. We've been decoding this reality, we need to decode this reality, and that means changing our consciousness, and that's what we decode. And Albert Einstein said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used to, we created them. So, here we are. In a perfect example of that, the way we have um, expressed ourselves through generations and generations, thousands of years of what we call human life, has got us into this situation. 
And so we need to change that to get out of it. And the difference is being in the program or being conscious beyond the program. It is absolutely that simple. And once we're really conscious beyond the program, there'll be nothing like fear of expressing yourself within the realm of the program. Because some people kind of suss the program, but they've not got so conscious that they've gone above fear. So they make the choice because they think, well, the consequences of making the choice, well, my life will change. Yes, it will, for the better, overwhelmingly, once you start to break out of it. The divine light is always in man, woman, presenting itself to the senses and to the comprehension, but man rejects it. We just have to let it in. You let it in through the heart. This is a wonderful lady, Alice Walker, wonderful lady. The most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. And that is the greatest uh, dismantling of human power that this archontic force has is selling the perception that we don't have any. You had the power all along, my dear. We have just forgotten and we're waking up to it. Who do we answer to? David Icke? Do we answer to Ethel Jones or Charlie Smith? Or do we answer to I am infinite awareness, all that is, has been, and ever can be, having an experience of that name? <laughs> that is the revolution. The revolution of self-identity from experience to that which is experiencing. Imprisoned by walls that we build for ourselves and the system helps us, encourages us to build them. Perception programming, we accept the, 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 the imposition of belief from other people, whether it's parents or academics, no. Blank sheet of paper, I decide, the, the I decides what goes on that paper. In other words, what I accept as my reality. I don't care how many letters you've got after your name. I don't care if you're freaking famous. I don't know who you are. I don't care if you're my mother and father who are trying to impose their belief system upon me. I am infinite awareness. I will decide what my belief is and how I perceive reality. And that, again, breaks out of this program of responding to how others tell us we should be. And we've got to kind of realize that there will be resistance to that. People who go, oh, yeah, yeah, what about you, when you start to resist the program? But it doesn't matter, because if they can't respect our right to be ours, well, what we'd bother in being around them anyway for? It's about... Um, to Sean Ferris at Hawthorne and the, the company, they were fantastic and put all the technology together. Um, and thanks to... Uh, Thanks to Wembley Arena. I tell you what, Wembley Arena, they're nice people. I love coming here, and they've been great with us as always this year. And thanks to Zachary, who's uh, made a big contribution to pulling out this uh, sequence we're going through here, which we've actually not rehearsed. So it'll be a bit of fun, because we have not been able to get together. We've rehearsed some of it, not much. So, uh, you know, skin of the pants and all that stuff, but that's fun, isn't it? Um, awaken, awaken, awaken. You know, when people talk about solutions, they kind of expect you to... Um, map out a, a, an organization and a structure and have someone taking the minutes. Um, that's not what it's about. Um, we're in a situation where, where psychopaths have taken over our reality. And so what's the answer? Well, the answer is we are. We are the answer. And, you know, you can, you can go through the left brain and talk about structure and he takes the minutes, like I say. But the bottom line is, the difference between the world we live in and the world that we can live in is whether our society is conscious or unconscious, because unconsciousness is getting to get us here, so consciousness must take us somewhere else. It's about becoming conscious. The question is, how do you become conscious? Well, you dis disconnect from the program and then you automatically are conscious, as I'll come to. But, you know, the, the theme in whatever cu uh, culture, whether it's the Gnostics or whatever, they talk about this archontic force envying humans and fearing that they will wake up. And that's why they have to keep us asleep and they're terrified that we'll wake up. And that's why in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Because the one-eyed man, the suppression, has kept humanity, the target population, in a deeper sense of ignorance than it is in. Thus, the one-eyed man is king. So we wake up and, like I said, the three-eyed, two-eyed man, woman, everyone, uh, will wake up and the, the game will be over. 
They don't keep us in a state of spiritual, mental, uh, and emotional oppression for a laugh. They do it because it's the